Well, few news outlets seem to be giving Libya the uh, coverage that it actually deserves. And when they do, it's armchair speculation. A lot of folks uh, reading uh, the same headlines that I have right here and talking about what they think uh, is actually happening on the ground there. So I'm a little tired of that. Let's talk to someone who's actually spent some time on the ground in Tripoli. Wayne Matson is an investigative reporter, and you just came back a few weeks ago, as I understand it, Wayne. Yes, I was actually a member of the uh, delegation that former Congresswoman Cynthia, Cynthia McKinney, McKinney. Mm -hmm. led there. And I have to say that even worse than arms, armchair speculation, the Washington Post, which you just showed, and the New York Times have pe reporters uh, in Tripoli who are obviously living in an alternate universe because what they were reporting, their datelines out of Tripoli, were, had nothing in, in common with what we all saw on the ground. First of all, they were saying, uh, you know, schools were closed. Why watch the kids go to school? Mm -hmm. Yes, things are not normal in Tripoli. Long gas lines because of the sanctions imposed. Uh, uh, there's uh, some shortages of food because uh, collective punishment is being applied right, by the NATO. The ports are blocked by The NATO ports are blocked, including fishing boats that can't get sea fresh seafood in. So, yes, it's very similar to what goes on in Gaza with the collective punishment uh, on those people there. But, uh, but Gaddafi has a lot of support in Tripoli. There's a report today from the Murdoch, uh, normal Rupert Murdoch uh, ex, uh, 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 distributors of, of uh, propaganda, uh, Wall Street Journal in particular, saying that Gaddafi's getting ready to flee Tripoli. Why would he? He has total support from Tripoli all the way to the Tunisian border. We had to go by car. We actually encountered one impromptu pro Gaddafi demonstration on the main highway. We got out and asked these people. We wanted to know, are these, you know, are these shills being paid by the government? This was no. It was but, total wait, impromptu. When I read this, I mean, uh, according to this, uh, Gaddafi is a lying son of a bitch who's running around Tripoli uh, well, giving out baskets of uh, Viagra and, uh, oh. you know, faking civilian casualties. You, so you, are you saying yeah, that's not you, what you saw? He, no. And, and you know, th we haven't seen uh, an information war like this, a propaganda war since the, you know, the, the leading up to the war against Iraq and the occupation. Remember the yellow cake uranium, the biological mobile weapons labs, uh, you know, Colin Powell mm -hmm. holding up the anthrax, all that, all so that you nonsense. Not see civilians, innocent civilians slaughtered. Yes. Uh, one thing, we did go to the hospital. We saw civilians who were, uh, had been hit with shrapnel. I think one of the things is NATO was saying we are not targeting civilians. We got the video footage of these people, uh, photographs, and now NATO at least has to admit that it is uh, hurting civilians in its attacks. And, uh, and they did admit to, to one civilians. recently that killed some children. But let's play, uh, I think we have a soundbite from President Obama, our own president, uh, speaking just a few days ago where he mentioned Libya. Let, let's play that clip if we have it. When innocents are being slaughtered and global security in danger, we don't have to choose between standing idly by or acting on our own. Instead, we must rally international action, which we're doing in Libya, where we do not have a single soldier on the ground, but are supporting allies in protecting the Libyan people and giving them the chance to determine their own destiny. Uh, so, Wayne, you heard the president protecting the Libyan people. Is he lying? Oh, I, I would say so. And we, we know that he, he doesn't even have the support of members of his own party. Uh, in the House of Representatives, 70 Democrats voted uh, for a resolution to curtail the U.S. Uh, support for this operation today in the House. Um, basically, um, look, w another thing that's not being reported, um, there are some rebels who have gone back to Gaddafi. We have seen reports of NATO hitting rebel columns. Uh, there are other reports that these may be rebels trying to get back to Tripoli to rejoin Gaddafi. Gaddafi's given amnesty to these people. Many uh, former rebels, including one I spoke to, said, look, we weren't happy with Gaddafi, but when we yeah. saw NATO, including Italy, our former uh, uh, colonial occupier, join this thing, and now there's some question whether Italy wants to participate in this any longer, they're, you know, saying, okay, he's a dictator, we've had him around for over 40 years, but darn it, he's a Libyan nationalist, and he has given us the highest standard of living in Africa. The, the, the really interesting thing to me, just to focus it back here in the U.S., is, uh, you, you know, you mentioned the House vote. There's, uh, it's mainly a, symbol, a symbolic vote. It's not actually going to change Libyan policy immediately, but it shows sends the message that Congress isn't very happy with this war. The American people aren't very happy with the war, 46 percent of them, according to a new Gallup poll today. And how does this administration sell uh, this conflict to the American people and to lawmakers? Let's listen to what Hillary Clinton had to say. Do we have that bite? The bottom line is, whose side are you on? Are you on Gaddafi's side? Or are you on the side of the aspirations of the Libyan people and the international coalition that has been created to support them? 
Now, Wayne, I don't know about you, but that's kind of familiar sounding. Let me play you another clip that we might have in the control room. Either you're with us, either you love freedom, and with nations which embrace freedom, or you're with the enemy. There's no in-between. You're either with us or you're with the enemy. That's, that's clear. Where's the media on this? Well, the media is, is silent. And, and worse, as I pointed out, they're putting out disinformation rather than reporting the facts as they see them on the ground. I think what we're seeing here is, uh, you know, Gaddafi, before this rebellion started in Libya, he was part of the international community. He had given up his WMDs in 2003 to George W. Bush's administration, and Bush got out there and said, hey, look what a success this is. We're now friends with Gaddafi. Uh, the, the, the thing is, is many of these Libyan rebels, and, and, and this is one thing that has not been reported, one of the first targets of the NATO airstrike was the Libyan anti-corruption agency in Tripoli. Mm -hmm. They were trying to destroy the documents. They had information. They were going to actually bring charges against some government ministers for siphoning off Libyan oil revenue and putting it in their uh, own Swiss bank accounts. Isn't it funny? Almost to a person, these are the ministers who defected to the rebel movement. Staying ba back on the media topic for a minute, I just want to ask you, I mean, there clearly is a, a, a shift in the mood of the country against the kinetic military operations, whatever you want to call it, in Libya. How intense it is, I don't know, but it's shifting, right? Um, why? Uh, let me phrase it this way. When's the last time MSNBC called you to put you on air? Oh, uh, or Fox uh, News uh, or CNN? Many, many years. And look, who so owns? Why, and why is that? General I mean, Electric. You're, is, but you're, you're on the ground. Yeah. You're getting this information. The information jives with what the people of America seem to uh, believe, which is that this conflict is not necessarily worth it. Why are you uh, the, the the pseudo Hanoi Jane? I mean, you remember right. how that conflict? Oh, absolutely. Out. Well, they don't want this information out. And uh, it's funny. I had more of an opportunity on Libyan state TV to give the, you know, what we're talking about here without any censors present. And I, the next day, people, total strangers coming up to me on the street in Tripoli, thank you for coming here to tell the truth for once. Uh, look, uh, NBC, still a, a, a lot of the ownership is General Electric, one of the big military contractors. Uh, Fox is Murdoch, who has his own interest in keeping these wars going. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, you're, you're not going to get on any, and CNN, which is more into infotainment, like the latest uh, murder trial in the South. Well, and on that, I think we have a photograph. We had an editorial meeting this morning where uh, we noticed that all three channels that we had on the, the, the mainstream channels, do we have that photo control room, uh, was, was covering something very important. It was a breaking news story. Let me show uh, what you're seeing here right now. MSNBC all the way on the left. Uh, I believe that's uh, CNN. I can't really see it in the middle. And Fox News. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> well, I think this is a problem. And, and, and look, this is more than the Libyan uh, situation, the war. Uh, this, is a, this is another constitutional showdown between the White House and Congress. And we haven't seen that. I mean, the whole purpose of the War Powers Act was to curtail Where's the showdown over presidents. Yemen, Pakistan, right. Somalia? Well, and, and isn't it funny? We, you know, here's another war against Arabs, Muslims. And, you know, where's the outrage? Uh, I mean, this was, talk about a war of choice. They talk about Iraq being a war of choice. This is a war of choice. And, and the people, basically, many of these rebel leaders are, are just as corrupt as Ahmed Chalabi All right. was. <laughs> All right. Well, Hanoi Wayne, uh, I, I, don't want, I don't want to give you that title, but uh, I, I do really appreciate you taking the time to explain to us exactly what's going on, since we're obviously not getting it here. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was investigative journalist Wayne Madsen.